So I severely overcooked the brisket, and this is how I redeemed myself. Stay tuned. So here I have a three week wet aged brisket. Originally what this video was going to be about was does wet aging your brisket help anything? But it turned into something different just because of my screw up. I'm going to go ahead and just give it a quick trim here. Oops, just ignore that scalp. All right, so we're done trimming, just kind of coat heavily in some salt, and then we'll put this in the fridge overnight and we'll get it cooking tomorrow. All right, on the meat side, I'm gonna use this kicking powder from Squealers and then some pepper, flip it over, and then I'm gonna not use the kicking powder on the fat side, just cause it's pretty spicy. Just kinda use a, a lot of pepper on that. Try to get the sides as much as I can here, but eventually I'm just gonna take it off the rack and just dip it in the, the pepper. Here on the pit, I have the fat trimmings already. Just been rendering down about 225. We're gonna let this thing sit for a little bit and then I'll ramp it up to 275 later on. Put our meter probe in and close it down. One quick tip, I do like to keep a few splits in the firebox to dry out, making them ignite really fast once thrown on the coals. In my retrospective, Infinite Wisdom, I'm going to get the Kamado ready for a long, low, slow hold. To ignite the Kamado, I'm going to just grab some coals from the workhorse. And go ahead and add a few more splits to the workhorse to keep that fire going while the Kamado gets up to him. You can see those pre-smoked splits ignite within seconds of being added to the coals. Here I'm getting the Kamado Joe set up for double indirect heat. Adding the slow roller. And then the rack to add the collector plates. Finally, our grill grates.
Here the brisket is just past the stall at 170 and is about ready to be wrapped. The smoked tallow is ready to come off and be placed in a container. Okay, time to wrap. Kind of spray the paper down with some water and apple, apple cider vinegar. Just to make it easier to go ahead and fold the paper over. Nothing special here. Just wrap it as tight as I can. Leave it fat side up. The grill is running about 225. It was at this moment he knew. He fucked up. And I fell asleep. After seeing the 210 degrees on this brisket, I got up and put it in a sous vide, held it at 150, trying to fix it in any way possible. Go ahead and get that out of the package here. Get it cut into, see if it's salvageable at all. Yeah, it's kind of hard to cut through. And you can see here it is dry as can be and looks like pot roast. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it into slices here. Not gonna make you watch this in real time, just speed it up a little bit. Nothing a lot of barbecue sauce can't fix, right? Let's go ahead and speed cutting through this flat real fast. So my idea to make this brisket usable was to make some mac and cheese out of it. Here I have half a box of shells. I believe it's 32 ounces after it's been cooked. A handful of brisket, just dump that in, whatever you feel like. And I happen to have a can of diced jalapeno, so I just drained that, dumped it in, spread it evenly on top. And then I cut up a brick of Velveeta cheese. I used half a brick here and just spread it evenly over the top of the, the mac and cheese. I'm gonna add enough whole milk to cover up to the top of the pasta. And then throw this in a 375 degree oven, giving it a stir every 30 minutes or so, just to get everything all mixed up. Here we are 30 minutes later again. I'm gonna just give this another quick stir. What you're looking for to know it's done is whenever everything is just creamy, all the milk is completely dissolved and there's nothing else running. You can see here there's a little bit extra liquid. So we'll just give it a quick stir, put it back in and pull it back out later. Good, 30 minutes later, and we're still not quite thick enough. Go ahead and give another quick stir. You can see it's starting to get crispy on the edges. That's what we want. Just get that mixed in, and we'll bring you back.
All right, this time we're good to go. I just have a couple slices of sharp cheddar cheese and white cheddar cheese. Put, some, put that on top here, let that melt real fast, and we'll pull it out and be done. And there you go, guys. If you have dry, unedible brisket, just add about 10 pounds of fat to it, and we can make it edible. This was absolutely amazing. I recommend giving it a try, even if you have decent brisket. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.